Good morning, friends and visitors. My name is Pastor Matt Johnson, and I want to welcome you today to South Sydney Anglican Church, wherever you are in the world, whether one of our regular members or visitors with us today. It is great to have you here. We're here to worship Jesus. We're here to listen to his word, and we're here to bring our prayer concerns to the Lord in prayer. So please bow your head, join with me as we begin our time together worshipping our great God. Let's pray. Uh, Dear Lord God, we thank you that you are our creator. We thank you that you are our sustainer. We thank you that you are our redeemer. Lord, we take so much for granted so much of the time, but in crises like this, we are forced to lift our eyes to you, to remember that you are the sovereign Lord, to remember our need of you, and to turn to you in prayer and in worship. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with us today. Move among us by your spirit, calm our nerves, hear our prayers, convict us of what we need to hear. Lord, we just commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have our first song this morning, Let Your Kingdom Come, and it's a great prayer. So let's stand at home or wherever you are, and let's sing Let Your Kingdom Come. That is certainly our prayer at the moment, that 
Jesus' kingdom will come and he'll wipe away every tear from our eyes. Uh, great to have you with us today. Um, please take a seat. If you stand it up to sing with us, very good. Please grab a seat. As you all are aware now, we're coming to you live uh, streamed on Facebook and YouTube because of the coronavirus um, that has uh, gripped our world over the last month. Uh, at the moment, Australia is doing very well, and it's great to see our numbers are so low, but there are so many people in our church uh, from other countries around the world. I've had a phone call from Sharon Chu this morning from Singapore, and she's particularly concerned because Singapore at the moment has got increased cases as Australia is going lower. So I promised her I'd pray uh, for Singapore this morning, so I'm going to ask you to pray with me uh, as we get into the notices, and I might also just mention a few other places in the world as well. Let me pray. Uh, dear Lord God, we thank you that we can come before you about all our concerns. Uh, Lord, we praise and thank you that the coronavirus has been somewhat contained in Australia and our hospitals have not been overwhelmed. We give you thanks to that. We pray that you give wisdom to our government as they think about relaxing the restrictions a little bit. But Father, our hearts go out to our brothers and sisters from Singapore, where it looked so good for a while there, Lord, and yet now the numbers are increasing. Again, we pray that the people there are wise, that they are considerate of one another, and Lord, that you contain the virus there. My heart also goes out, Lord, to Ecuador, where Sylvia is from. Uh, Father, we know that Ecuador, South America is starting to be affected significantly, Lord, so we pray especially for Sylvia's family that you protect them and that you give uh, wisdom to the doctors there. We think of Hong Kong, we think of Japan, we think of Africa as well, Lord, where right now a virus is also beginning to spread. Lord, we pray that the Western world will be compassionate. We pray, Lord, that we will share our supplies, our wisdom, our knowledge. And Lord, again, we pray that you will contain this virus, protect our family and friends, but Lord, also use it to humble people and to draw them to yourself. We pray and ask all this today in Jesus' name. Amen. A uh, couple of things, a couple of notices as always. Uh, we are now live streaming our church service, 10 o'clock on Sundays on Facebook and YouTube. Always available, 10 o'clock. But if you can't make a week, there is always opportunity to look up both Facebook, YouTube later. You'll be able to find the church service there and still hear the messages that are being uh, recorded on a week-to-week -week basis. Also, please remember, we are meant to be a community overflowing with faith, hope and love in Jesus, not just in good times, but especially in difficult times. And so I think it's a great opportunity. Facebook, YouTube, how easy is it to share a link or to invite someone to church at the moment through your social media? Continue to think, who can I reach out to during this time? Um, our community groups, as always, are being run on uh, Zoom at the moment, so you can see some details there. If you'd like to join one of our Zoom groups for our Bible study or for Overcomers Outreach, our 12-step addiction program, please contact the church. You can find church office numbers on our website and we'll give you details on how to join those groups. We also do morning tea after church uh, on Zoom. You can see the ID number on your screen right now. So again, if you're visiting from somewhere in the world, V. Rika joined us a few weeks ago, please jump on Zoom, say hello after the service. We'd love to meet you and just hear a little bit from you. Um, tithes and offerings can actually be given at the moment to uh, the, the church. Um, you can see the BSB and account number on the screen. Uh, South Sydney Anglican Church, and again, it's always appreciated. Uh, I have been told by my treasurer that a number of people have stepped up and started giving in March, and so if you were one of them, I want to say a special thank you to you. Thank you for continuing to support our church uh, through this time. Uh, one last thing. I mentioned to you a minute ago that we're meant to be a community overflowing with faith, hope, and love in Jesus. This means we want to share our faith, hope and love with the wider world, not just keep it to ourselves. And as part of our strategy in doing that, our church is committed to training up the next generation of men and women who are coming through. It's no good just for the older people to know how to share the gospel. It's important for our next generation. And so one of the things we're doing is training up uh, men and women for that particular task. 
And as I shared with you last week, we're doing kingdom parables at the moment. The purpose of the kingdom parables was to give some of the great young men in our church an opportunity to preach, to learn to preach. And today we're going to have Toma Aston preaching to you about the parable of the banquet. So I'm going to ask Toma to come onto screen now. Uh, this is Toma Aston. Good looking fella, isn't he? Great looking <laughs> fella. Um, Toma, this is your first sermon ever preached. How are you feeling? To be honest, a little nervous, but excited at the same time. So, But I also feel that, yeah, there's a weight to it, how important it is. So, Absolutely. Um, I have confidence in you. I know you've been leading Bible study groups for a while now. I've heard you speak. God has given you great insight into God's word. So I'm really looking forward to hearing you preach today. That should be great. Uh, just tell the people at home who may not know you, how long you've been a Christian? I've been a Christian for about seven years. I came to know the Lord when really I was in a bad situation and my life was in a mess. So since then, he's taken me on a journey in that seven years of healing and recovery. And he's brought me to this point today where I can say I've been set free and know him more intimately now. So, yeah. Excellent. And opening God's word with us today. Yeah. Uh, tell people, what do you do for work? What's your normal weekly I'm, work look like? I'm a community care support worker. So I work throughout the week visiting clients, supporting them with their needs, seniors with dementia. I do group programs and other things like that in the community. So, so a real heart sort of ministry to the people you're yes. serving. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, hobbies and interests. What, what are your hobbies and interests? Hobbies. I think my number one hobby would be art. I love to paint and draw. I also like bike riding for exercise. But reading, I think. I love reading different Christian books. I spend time in God's Word. And I wouldn't call that a hobby, but yeah, reading is, yeah. Fantastic. Um, now, you've been recently married to an absolutely beautiful, wonderful yes, woman yes. named Shirley. Yes, I have. Yes. Yep. And you're um, going to tell us more about I, that? I will share a bit more. I won't say anything now, but I might, yeah, bring that up in my message or something. So, okay, excellent. Yeah. Let me pray uh, for Toma. He'll pray again in a moment, but let me pray. Dear Lord God, we again thank you for the young people you've put in our church. We thank you that there are so many young people at the moment who are committed to serving, who are committed to developing their gifts, that you may be glorified. We just ask today, Lord, that you put a special blessing upon Toma, use him for your glory, and help us all to listen attentively to your word. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Toma. Great to have you here. Thank you. Look forward to it. Um, we're going to have our, our first Bible reading for today. Uh, it comes from Luke 14. And Janina Britton is going to be bringing that to us. So I'll ask Janina to come forward. Luke 14. Yes, good morning. I'll be reading from Luke 14, beginning at verse 12. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbours. If you do, they may, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I've just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry, 
and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Hello and welcome everybody. As you know, my name is Tame, and I'm a member here at our congregation at South Sydney Anglican Church. We've recently been looking at kingdom parables, and today we've looked at the parable Jesus talked about, about the great banquet in Luke 14. My message and title for today is that there is a great banquet in God's kingdom. With that in mind, let me pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day and time we have together in fellowship. I pray, Lord, that as we gather to hear from you, you would teach and encourage us to know the truth of your good news and that we would share it with other people in our world. Lord, I pray that you would use me today to share and talk about the good news of your banquet. Lord, I pray that my speech wouldn't be in plausible words of wisdom, but rather in demonstration of the spirit and with power so that people's faith may not rest on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. And I also pray, Lord, that people's hearts and minds would fully grasp the invitation you have for them to enter your kingdom. I pray, Lord, that you would bless this time for your glory and your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. When I was preparing for this sermon and reading the passage, I was actually reminded of an event in my life. Like Matt said, I've recently been married, and we actually put on quite a banquet ourselves. Um, I think I've got some photos here to show you. That's our tables we set up and everything beforehand. And yeah, it was a great time for family and friends to gather. But there was also a lot of preparation and things that took place beforehand. But once everything was, oh, there I am, this is my speech. <laughs> once everything was ready, we sent out an invitation and everyone just came and celebrated with us. It was a joyous day that uh, me and my wife will always remember. But my first point today is about that great banquet we just talked about. So let's look back at Luke and we'll read from verses 15 to 17. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. You see, in the passage we just read, it's talking about a banquet far more glorious than any other banquet, a banquet that is yet to take place. The invitation has already been sent out. You see, God has already prepared a great banquet in his heavenly kingdom. And it's for us, and God has sent out his invitation to you and to me. The great banquet refers to the arrival of the kingdom of heaven in the ministry of Jesus. With its present and joyful fellowship with God, that will be fully realized in the coming age. Jesus often used parables and stories like these so we can gain more of an insight and understanding to help reveal a heavenly truth through an earthly story and what we gain, and that we would gain more of an understanding about his kingdom. Jesus himself said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. He talks about his kingdom and what is taking place, and what will take place. It's also a great way to capture our imagination, but also for our heart and spirit to be enlightened and to know a spiritual truth. It helps us to know what God has done and what he has planned for us. As we read about this great banquet, we come to realize that God has a place for us in heaven if we will believe and receive that invitation. This is a great surprise and an amazing thought. 
because we all live in a fallen world and we all have disobeyed God and have gone our own way and have abandoned him, whether now or in the past. It goes all the way back to Adam and Eve who disobeyed God. God, and then they were banished from the Garden of Eden or paradise where they were sinless and had a perfect relationship and close fellowship with him. So whether it is disbelief or disobedience and other sins, we have fallen away and have become separated from God. But God in his grace and kindness, and because he loves us so much, wants to bring us back into a right relationship with him and back into close fellowship with him in his kingdom, but not only in this time, but for all eternity. So if God has prepared a banquet, what will you do with the invitation? Trust me, you don't want to miss out. The time is now to accept that invitation because we do not know when exactly the day will come when the king opens the doors to his banquet to invite all in who accepted his invitation. My second point today is that God has sent out the invitation, but people made excuses. Let's read this in verses 18, 19, and 20. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. This tells me that people are failing to see that the kingdom of God is now here and that God is inviting people to participate in its great blessings. Bought a field, bought five yoke of oxen, have married a wife. Shows that these people, or you could even say that people in this present time, have put the busyness of everyday life ahead of the claims of God and his kingdom. And they are therefore now not worthy to enter it. Jesus taught on similar themes in Luke, about hearing the word of God, about denying ourselves, about seeking his kingdom first. God always wants us to keep him first place in our lives and to follow him. But I confess that even I also made excuses whenever such an invitation was presented to me. One example is that my mother was always praying for me and trying to lead me to Christ. But I had bad influences in my life. I was living rebelliously, doing my own things, and as I exper experimented with drugs, things got off course. My mum was always praying for me and trying to lead me to church or to Bible studies and trying to encourage me and reveal the truth to me. But I continued to live my own way, doing what I thought was right in my own eyes. This went on for many years until I hit a low point where I had nowhere else to turn but to God. Thankfully, his invitation was always open to me and he took me on a journey of healing and recovery from my addictions and he set me free and gave me a new life. I never drifted too far away from God that I was excluded from the banquet. I guess the lesson in this passage simply means not to make excuses, and in my experience, I encourage you to consider Christ. It's never too late. Make the most of such an opportunity if it's presented to you. The time is now. You'll never be too bad of a person, and it doesn't matter what you have done. His arms are open and his invitation still stands. The final point I'd like to make today is that there is no second chance once the banquet starts. We read this in verses 21 to 24. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, we, you, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, 
go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in, so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who are invited will get a taste of my banquet. It's important to note that when Jesus told us who to invite into his kingdom, he told us to invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the people on the highways and hedges. Jesus again emphasizes the radical generosity and care that his disciples are to show towards those who are physically impaired or economically deprived. Also, that God is a good God, and that's his heart for all people. The word compel here simply means to compel or force someone, but a number of interpreters understand the weaker sense, strongly urge or persuade. Let me tell you that if you reject the invitation, God will invite others. The kingdom of God points to the future banquet to which is in Jesus' day would have been understood that it is that only godly Jews would be invited. Jesus, however, uses the parable to teach his listeners contrary to their expectations, that the guests invited originally will miss the banquet and will be replaced instead by the poor, the crippled, and blind, and lame, the outsiders that are found on the highways and hedges. It may be surprising that Jesus is inviting such people like the broken, crippled, and lame, but this also tells us that anyone can come and no one is too broken. The amazing thing is that God takes our sin and gives us his righteousness and by an act of his love and mercy, he views us as having right standing with him through faith. This is the great exchange. God takes our sins, puts them on Jesus and gives us his righteousness. Someone had to pay the price for sin and we could not. So God sent Jesus to be our substitute and pay our sin debt in full. God is the God of our righteousness, the one who sees us as righteous, not because anything we have ever done, but because of what Jesus has done for us. It is a gift to us the time we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. It comes by grace through faith. Since it is a free gift, we cannot earn it, deserve it, or pay for it. Also, this gift and invitation to the great banquet God gives us has already been paid for through the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, making peace by the blood of his cross. He reconciles us in the body of his flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless before him. God will make you alive together with Christ and will, give, and will forgive all your sins and cancel the record of your debt. He sets it aside by nailing it to the cross. All you have to do is believe in that truth and accept Jesus as your Savior. He did all this because he loves you so much and wants to spend eternity with you and begin by a joyous banquet when he returns. But he also wants to be with you in this present time and be in close fellowship with you. He doesn't force anyone to do this, but to the one who opens their heart to him, he is faithful to forgive all your sins and give you a new life that you may be born again and have a fresh start. Friends, God loves you so much and wants to, you to become his child so that you can know him as your heavenly father who loves to lavish his love on his children. I urge and compel you to accept his invitation today. He stands at the door of your heart and knocks. Open the door to him and let him in and he will come and dine with you. If any of these words have resonated with you and you feel that you're being drawn closer to God, I would like to give you an opportunity today to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. By a simple prayer, you can pray with me and join in with me by saying Amen at the end. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. 
I accept the invitation to your banquet and heavenly kingdom. Amen. I'd like to encourage you that if you have prayed that prayer or you felt those words in your heart and you said that amen, that all of heaven is rejoicing over you. And if you'd like to, you can send us a message on Facebook or call the church here so we can congratulate you and bless you in any way we can on your journey with the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Toma. Uh, let me just say that if you did pray that prayer with Toma today, we would really love to hear from you. Um, it's great to actually know that you're saved, to know that your name is written into heaven and that the angels are rejoicing over you. But as a church family, even though we can't meet at the moment, we want to bless you and encourage you and support you. Uh, Toma also just wanted me to challenge you. He is sort of finishing his sermon. He wanted to make it evangelistic. He wanted to reach out to the people uh, who may not yet know Jesus as their Saviour and Lord and invite them to the banquet. But he also wrestled with the other side of that parable where it's actually a challenge to each and every one of us. Are we going into the byways as Christians? Are we going out and inviting people to this great banquet? You know, the Jews, many of them sadly rejected the invitation to start with. Um, Gentiles started coming in, the least likely started in. But really, the gospel is still available to everyone. It's available to Jews like Toma. Toma comes from a Jewish background, but as come to the banquet through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's still available to Gentiles. It doesn't matter what you've done, you can come. But more importantly, are we as a church inviting people to come? Are we still overflowing with, in, during this crisis, sharing our faith, sharing our hope, sharing our love? Toma wanted me to just challenge you with that as I finished up today. I'm going to pray specifically for our church before Naomi comes and prays that we will continue to be evangelistic during this time as well. Let me pray. Uh, dear Lord God, those of us who are Christians and we hear that parable, know, Lord, that we are your servants. And even as you told your servant to go out into the byways and invite people to come in, so you have told us in the Great Commission to go into all the world and make disciples. Lord, help us not to be apathetic. Help us not to be lazy. Help us not to think that anyone is too far gone to be invited to your banquet. Lord, please compel us by your spirit, through your word, to be the courageous ambassadors, the courageous people who invite others to come. And Lord, we pray that during this time as we're isolated, that you will actually continue to convict us of this truth, that we may fulfill your purpose and bring glory to you and your son through the preaching of the gospel. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. I'm going to read from Revelation chapter 15. Great and marvellous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed creating the heavens and the earth by speaking, was awe-inspiring God. It is complex and beautiful from the vastness of space to the intricacies of DNA. It tells us about you, and we worship. Parting the sea to rescue your people and feeding them when there was no food and establishing them in a beautiful place is also awe-inspiring and we learn about your holiness and goodness. It brings us to worship. But when you gave yourself for us because you loved us, even though we were your enemies and far from you, that stirs up heartfelt worship. When we can bring nothing of value to you that you could need from us, and yet you wash our sins away through the blood of Jesus as a gift, we are drawn to you in love. And then we see the risen Jesus who defeated death 
and has proven that he has paid our debt to you and we rejoice. We worship you in awe and love and joy. You are great and righteous. And we look forward to joining you at your heavenly banquet where you will delight in us and we will be with you. We will feast with you and marvel at you and all the troubles and hardships of this life will be forgotten. We want to be there with you, Lord. Keep us firm and strong until the end. Give us patience and endurance that we may live by faith until that time. We know you are faithful and you will do it. We thank you that Australia has not suffered as many deaths as other nations because of the coronavirus. But we lift up those who have lost family and friends and are unable to gather together to mourn. We pray for your comfort to sustain them. We pray that you will bring good for Australia out of this pandemic. We pray that we as Christians will take opportunities to speak of our hope in Jesus. We pray that we may be distinctly Christian, that others may see our hope and faith and love overflowing. May your name be honoured because of us. May many people come to know Jesus at this time. We pray for our governments who have to continue to make decisions regarding our safety. We pray for great wisdom for our Prime Minister Scott Morrison and his advisers and for our Premier Gladys Berejiklian. We pray for our veterans and service men and women today, the day after Anzac Day. We pray for people, we, sorry, we thank you for people who are willing to give up their lives for the good of others. We pray for the many struggling with mental health issues and we pray for those who minister to them. May they know Jesus and his loving touch that says, do not be afraid, I am the first and the last and the living one. We pray for Viarika in Greece and for Matt and Jen in Japan, that they may be one with us in serving Jesus in their context. Fill them with peace, and please give them joy in their service. May your gospel continue to go out from them, bringing freedom and hope. We pray for those in our church who are without work, and we ask for your provision. We pray for those whose housing situation has become uncertain. Please provide for them also. We pray for Tim and Grace, and for Yvonne, working in hospitals. We ask for their safety. We also pray for Jeff Britton with back pain and Sylvia with shoulder pain. Please bring healing to them. And we pray for our church to be able to continue financially to get through this time. We pray that we will keep our eyes fixed on you, the author and perfecter of our faith, and that we will continue to preach Christ crucified without fear or favouritism. May the Lord of peace himself give us all peace, always and in every way. Amen. Thank you, Naomi. We're going to sing our final song uh, for this morning. So thank you for joining with us. Um, the song is Shout to the Lord, All the Earth, Let Us Sing. And let's remember that with the great banquet we've heard today, we've got a message to shout from the hilltops, to shout in the byways about our great Lord and Saviour. So let's, again, if you feel up to it, stand at home. Us in the church here are standing. We're going to open our lungs and we're going to sing God's praise. So join with us in Shout to the Lord.
friends, great to have you with us today. I want to give a special thanks to Toma for opening God's Word. It was a faithful exposition of the great banquet and great clarity in the gospel truth that everything is now done. Everything is now ready. Jesus has paid the penalty and we are all welcome to come to the banquet. Thank you for sharing that with us today, Toma. Friends at home, join us on Zoom very shortly. The details will come up on the screen in a moment. And on Zoom, remember to bless Toma, encourage Toma. It's never an easy thing, but I'm hoping that's the first of many great sermons we hear from Toma going into the future. So, brothers and sisters, let me just remind you as words from the parable we heard today, John 14, verse 16. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servants to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. Come, for everything is now ready. Friends, let me pray as we conclude our time together. Lord, we thank you that you have now done everything in Jesus for us who are sinners, who are broken, to actually come to the heavenly banquet and be reunited with you forever. Lord, please impress that truth upon our heart. Please give us the hope of looking forward to that in the future. And Lord, please help us to share this truth with others. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join us on Zoom. You'll see the details on the screen right now. ID 502 281 938. And I believe Lisa will be there to meet you. Thank you.